Yes, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, looks like we have quite a, quite a company here today. <laughs> um, so today is Thursday, you know, we talked about a lot of different technologies as part of some of those talks. Um, I thought it would be kind of good at wrapping up the conference uh, to talk about some real solutions and the stuff that we've done um, specifically regarding specific solutions uh, that's been going on within Cisco. We've mentioned multiple different technologies. We've mentioned hypercloud, hybrid cloud, intercloud, cloud. What does it all mean? So this is one of the solutions that we're working on internally um, and developing a lot of technologies around that actually touches upon a lot of those things. So we have the intercloud in here, we have the hybrid cloud, we have jobs running in many different places, we pull it all together. Um, so this is, um, it should be pretty interesting. It's, there's a lot of stuff in here, so feel free to ask any questions. The high level description is that this is analysis of the traffic that is coming out of the website uh, cisco.com. One thing that we're trying to do with that analysis is improve customer um, satisfaction. You know, my favorite example is sometimes you call in and ask you for a customer number on the phone and then you talk to somebody on the phone later 10 minutes, uh, in 10 minutes time and then they ask you for the phone number again. And, um, things like that happen all the time and what we're trying to do is to get some user profiles that if somebody calls in we already have an idea of what they're looking for what they looked at before to really streamline the experience of when they actually call so this is a really high level description initially the system has been developed on aws but about five months ago we started the project to start sharing some of those jobs, move them to our internal Cisco InterCloud into services infrastructure, re-architect some stuff, um, and it's been pretty successful and pretty interesting, so I'll, I'll go over some of that. So customer interaction analytics, I mentioned some of it already, but this is basically a high level, but a little bit more detailed view, you know, it contains information coming from internal bug tracking systems, um, website information, uh, ticket information, registration information, user profiles, Salesforce, and all of those different processes are managed by different systems, both internally in IT and on the cloud. And we're bringing it all together in one single analytics uh, system. We're actually starting, a, well, we're calling it IntoCloud Analytics right now. And if you go to IntoCloud-Analytics.io, we have some of that information over there as well as my information. So after the, uh, after the presentation, feel free to check that out. So this is really into cloud analytics, where there's a lot of stuff happening all over the cloud, all over the world, and all the different levels, bare metal, uh, Docker containers, <laughs> even is over there, um, cloud, you know, everything. High level, this is really what the customer journey is. You know, they want to know about upgrades, bugs, software, um, you know, they want to uh, troubleshoot their devices. We really take that information and create insights for figuring out how to service the customer better. And you can see some of the impact there. It's pretty straightforward stuff. We all know why analytics is really good, you know, because it can really help us to understand what's happening in a way that we really can't do without the data and without the analytics. This is one of the slides that describes architecture. This is pretty high level, just kind of the key, key points of what's going on. So we have data ingestion. Uh, that is both coming out of Cisco DV. Cisco DV, by the way, is a Cisco data virtualization platform. It used to be, a couple of years ago, it used to be called Composite. Uh, Cisco purchased uh, them. So now, of course, they're part of, the, part of our strategy. You might have heard some of you about Kafka, Redis, various ETL components. Um, those are different technologies that have emerged, you know, a couple of years, three years ago that are very, very widely used. So we definitely try to use those as much as possible. Overall, 
This kind of picture is called Lambda architecture when you have real-time data coming in, it gets compared with the uh, uh, data that's already been processed, some learning has happened there already. So you're kind of using the previous historical data together with the current data that's streaming to come up with predictions or uh, recommendations real-time. Also we're showing a little bit of technologies that are involved. We use both Hive and Impala and I have a couple of more slides in there. And Zoom Data and Platform actually has been really good partners in the last uh, year or so. We're working with them very closely to get some of that going. So AWS and CIS intercloud solution. This is where it gets really interesting. So this is basically kind of a zoom in on the previous slide. I'm not going to go over, over the right side because it's more or less the same, but uh, just with a little bit more detail. So what was implemented previously in AWS is a 30-node cluster. It was done in conjunction with some other companies. It was purely more or less from an analytics point of view and uh, MapReduce uh, situation. Daily intake was about 30 to 50 gigs per day. Um, and that's the composition of, of the machines. Pretty, pretty typical for that kind of workload. So when we started the project, what did we want to get out of it? And what did we actually want to see um, going on? Those are some of the descriptions, so you can look at it really quickly. I think the main thing is on the bottom there that, you know, we really wanted to connect multiple data sources and really have things happening um, in, in multiple areas at the same time, which is the definition of hybrid cloud and uh, kind of intercloud hybrid analytics. This is a high-level view of really the things that we're looking in general in Cisco intercloud. Um, there's a lot of stuff to say that I can talk about it for days, of course, but uh, this gives you an idea that we actually partner every single thing that you see on there, every single level, every single component. I can think of one or two partners that we're working with to implement that kind of analytics platform within Cisco. We'll be rolling it out as services sometime soon. This is the stuff that we're showing at the conference, and this talk is really where we're at right now, a lot of stuff in development, we're doing co-development with partners, but that's a really big scope that we have on data analytics platform. Specifically, this uh, project, um, when we started moving it from AWS, part of that, the Hadoop portion of that, was running on CDH, CDH 5.1, uh, 3, we actually partnered with Cloudera, of course, Elkstack, Apache Kafka, you can see some of them there. A big piece of that is Cisco Data Virtualization. There's a lot of enterprise customers for that. It's not an open source project, so it's not as popular as Apache Kafka or CDH, or even in Hadoop world, but it's a key part of our strategy going forward. I think you guys will see that it's pretty interesting as we start getting it more involved into our strategy. Success criteria, most of this has actually been already implemented. A couple of them we're still working on, but I'm happy to say that a lot, most of it is working. You know, we've been able to com uh, connect everything and the performance is there and the actual results are there. So that's pretty cool. We just uh, finished some of these components in the last couple of weeks, in the last month. So it's constantly an evol evolving situation. So when we started moving from AWS to CIS, it used to be called CCS. Actually, moving might not be the right, right wor word. We actually like to look at it as sharing and integration, and there's a couple of slides on that. So part of that, when we started implementing part of the solution on CCIS, we tried to keep all the VMs the same. Test data that we're showing here is, um, it's one day worth of data in the working system. And we did a couple of cycles of testing. 
So the first step of testing was really just take the MapR jo um, MapReduce jobs that are running on AWS, move them, move them purely on CIS, get that to work and compare the results. So the final results were actually pretty good. Um, even in our one of our alpha data centers that was still being worked on, performance was uh, within 5% of AWS. So we're very, very happy about that. This is kind of a technical slide. We can see that all the scaling through different cycles goes on pretty evenly. And uh, that bottom line, bottom two lines, is pretty much with a line uh, with AWS. So we're very happy about our infrastructure at this point from the performance point of view. I'll just give the slide more details there. So another thing that we did is that that AWS uh, solution has been done about a year and a half ago. So in big data and the cloud world, a year and a half ago is pretty long time. You know? <laughs> so since then, there has been a lot of releases, and Spark became stable, and Spark SQL came out, and we're working with the Databricks team as well. So we kind of figured, OK, why don't we take those uh, MapReduce jobs and see what happens in Spark on the same size cluster, but implement it with all these new technologies. So my, uh, uh, my team took all the code, did some work, uh, converted into Spark. We actually did it in two stages. One was just take all the MapReduce algorithms and more or less just put them onto the Spark platform without really changing any architecture or any algorithm. So whatever, uh, all the different steps were the same. And that's the actual flow. The initial MapReduce jobs were implemented in Wukon, which is a Ruby framework for creating MapReduce jobs. So there's a funny story, you know, that part of the team that was doing this initial step, there were some junior developers, and when we did it, uh, that first step, people just converted stuff from Ruby to Scala. They looked at it, and performance was pretty much the same. And they're looking at it and like, oh, well, I heard the Spark is so much faster. Why isn't it working faster? This is kind of, you know, doesn't make sense. You know, we don't want to do Scala. We just want to stick to Java. Or, I mean, Spark works with both, but like, you know, what's going on here? So we had a couple of interesting meetings, and you know, some senior guys came in, me included, and said, OK, well, let's just look at it. Let's do some rearchitecture, because uh, just purely algorithmic work. We don't need to uh, write all the different intermediate results. We can keep things in memory. It was really just one day worth of thought you know, of how we can rearrange some of the pieces within the code. So you can see that that central part has changed. You know, all of those little con um, intermediate results, we've been able to keep them up in memory. It, uh, uh, it's all actually happening on the same cluster. It's the same cluster, same configuration. And uh, well, maybe we should go back a little bit just to look at specifics. So, So that second bullet point is the key. You know, with a lot of stuff in Spark, even if it's an immutable object, we can still keep them up in memory. We don't need to save. Uh, we can do multiple cycles in the same object. Uh, we can. A lot of those jobs are decorations, filtering, things like that. So it, it's a huge, huge algorithmic improvement against regular MapReduce, of course. And cleaning things, you know, Spark is great at that. So once we were done with kind of two days of thinking and uh, a week of implementation, stuff just started running 20 times faster. So that always brings a smile <laughs> to your face, you know, when you kind of when you're an architect and a developer and you see this kind of results. It's a really beautiful thing when you can see that and. Uh, I think I got some converts. You know, some of the junior developers really understood the power and idea behind Spark, especially running within the same cluster. Everything is the same. All the data came out to be the same. Took a couple of days of thinking about it and learning. It was a really cool result. So I guess lesson learned here is that you know, when you're converting things in the new technology, 
definitely just spend some time a little bit thinking about it in React architecture. Usually, especially with Spark, it's pretty simple because just the programming model is amazing. You can do so many things without Spark and uh, Scala and Python, and it's uh, with a little bit of training, things just work so much better. And this is, by the way, um, there's a lot more improvements that you can do in Spark. You can do in-memory file system. This is relatively vanilla Spark implementation. Like I mentioned, it was kind of a pilot uh, project for some of the junior members of the team that came on. I just gave them that task to do, and they did it in just a couple of weeks. I highly recommend approaching your future project or, or working on some of the new uh, conversion uh, into these new technologies going forward. So this is where the hybrid cloud and intercloud comes in. You know, we've got uh, those uh, Spark jobs working faster. We moved them from, CI, uh, from AWS to CIS, but we still had all the different components li uh, uh, laying within the infrastructure. And uh, Cisco vir data virtualization platform is really good at that. It's really good at combining things. It has a very nice user interface. It's a SQL-based solution. But it's really amazing at pulling things together and make it uh, one single um, schema and way of looking at things. So those are the couple of things that we're connecting. You can see here that Cisco DV is running on the cloud. RIDES is the system that is internally in the IT. It's been developed and, and put together years ago. So this is kind of your cl classic how do I connect IT to the cloud scenario and stuff that's been running there. Um, it gets data from Salesforce. It's highly controlled. Not a lot of people have access to it. It has all the user profiles. But um, to actually expose that data for fur further analytics, we can connect to it through Cisco DV. And technically, it all works. That, that data just shows up as tables within Cisco DV. But what it actually gives you is also policy enforcement. Uh, we were able so that basically people, not everybody has access to the data. You can really nicely control that within Cisco DB. This is another leg. You know, that CTO group cluster um, is my team cluster that I just described. That's where the Spark was running. So we had still some MapReduce jobs running on Hive. We had some Spark jobs running in, in uh, Impala. It was, it's still sharing, of course, you know, all the uh, HDFS, all the resources, just multiple technologies. And actually, that's what happens in migration of some of those projects. You know, you kind of have to do things step by step. But all the results and uh, all the information and predictions that we can generate in the batch mode within the Hadoop cluster, we can also access through Cisco DV. And that's, you know, that's actually going between two cloud instances now. The third one is yet another system within Cisco. Well, actually, it's still the same system, but now there were systems, but we're combining them to really get the uh, specific bug information and the value of that. The combination is actually happening within Cisco DV. Like, let's say, without Cisco DV, you would need to pull in either data from Hadoop into the older system or the data from the older system into Hadoop. And some people do that. It's called Data Lake and Data Hub. It's a nice way to do it. But for certain tasks, uh, it's too much of a job because you need to create your special workflows. And it's uh, really not, uh, not the same two systems. But Cisco DV can just look at them both at the same time and bring it into the same SQL schema. And it's really good for that kind of uh, data discovery and fast data analytics. By the way, this whole solution we've been able to install and set up in just a couple of weeks. This is the DV part. So this is a really cool hybrid cloud situation now, the third stage, where 
you know, we build on what we've done before. So just recap, Rides is an old in internal IT system. CIS into cloud, uh, that cluster is all the jobs that we moved from AWS to CIS, we architected it, started doing predictions in Spark and accessing it through this uh, newer technologies. And we still had some jobs that were running in AWS and we're connecting to AWS directly through the secure channel. So we're actually connecting three different data sources sitting in different regions of the country to get one single analytics in a single place. Right now we're working actually even with MAPAR, the partners of us as well, to connect MAPAR to it and to different data centers as well and really try to see what the performance is. So not only we're going to have things running across the world pretty much, being able to bring them together, but also have multiple uh, Hadoop distribution providers that are part of the project. I'm not sure that anybody actually has done that before, so we're kind of looking forward for this project to move uh, further and work with all these partners to put it together. And, you know, I talked to Cisco DV, at the end of the day, all of those things, this is basically how it looks like. And there's JDBC drivers and there's ODBC drivers, so you can bring in all these different data sources. You can set up your caching rules, you can set up your pooling rules, you can um, do it real time. All those queries can be written in real time. And it's just a simple SQL query that gets all the information all, all in one place. And the next step, we're actually working with Zoom Data and Platform is to write the drivers for it. So you'll be able to connect directly to some of the schemas and visualize it as you're uh, exploring and discovering your data and information that's, that is locked in there, but we want to unlock it with, uh, with this data analytics capability. So all of those things that I just described, uh, they will be available as services within uh, Cisco in, in, Intercloud um, services, analytics architecture. I'm looking forward to actually present in Berlin. I think that's our next big presentations to show the progress of this and how we're actually bringing out the services. Uh, we're going to start announcing some things. I can't really say right now, but very soon. But really excited to make it all available to you guys. Do you have any questions? It's kind of a question and not really. Yeah. Um, go to our Intercloud Analytics.io page and check it out there. We'll keep posting updates up there. And I'm um, looking forward to showing you some more at the next Cisco Live. Thank you.